everybody. Happy Pride Month. I am honored to introduce you to this incredible panel today, Dr. Katherine Davis, Maggie Zabo, and Alexa Best. International pop songstress Maggie Zabo just released a music video called Rebuild, directed by Alexa Best and starring Dr. Katherine Davis. It follows Dr. Davis's story in photographs from birth to losing her job and being forced to detransition in the 1990s in order to continue to feed her family. After a nearly fatal emergency surgery, Dr. Davis received her wake up call. She finally transitioned in 2016 at the age of 70 and is now living as her true authentic self. She is a prominent member of the LGBTQ plus community in Los Angeles and a founding member of the Trans Chorus of Los Angeles. Alexa recently completed the short film Emotional Labor, which begins its festival run later this year. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. It's such an honor to have you here. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you are all on the West Coast, so I apologize. You had to wake up much earlier than I am here over on the East Coast. So again, we, we spoke a little off air. We're having our tea, coffee, or beverage of morning, morning beverage of choice together. And I have no judgment. Whatever that is, go for it. <laughs> so I'm going to actually start off with Catherine. If you could please just kind of share a little bit. I was so moved by your story and the beautiful retelling of it through the music video Rebuild. Can you share what it was like for for you in the 90s when you first tried to transition? Well, it was uh, an interesting journey at that time. I, I had, you know, the, I've known since I was like three or four years old that I really wasn't the boy that everyone told me I was. Um, I did, I joined a group in the 80s um, in Toronto where I was living to, you know, for support and that and started to transition shortly after and into the 90s. Um, so I, I was transitioning and I went to my workplace and, um, they said, well, that's very nice. Uh, we'll see you later. And, um, essentially, you know, gave me a little handshake and a, a, a severance package and sent me out the door. I tried to get jobs, um, and I was unable to, and I had two small children at the time, uh, who needed me and I needed them. So I decided with the help of my therapist and some others to detransition and stop transitioning. And I went through, you know, I stopped hormone therapy and I had double mastectomy. And uh, there's an interesting story with that. When I went into the doctor that was doing the mastectomy, he, <laughs> he said, how long have you been living as a man? And I said, because he thought I was a female to male transition. Oh, okay. I said, unfortunately, my whole life. And he kind of looked at me and, you know, it was a silly moment. But um, it was a difficult choice, but one that I had to make. My family, my children um, are the most important thing in my life. And um, I, I, I was able to detransition. I was able to then resume my career and... Um, change a little bit within my career to a consulting role from a um, teaching and administrative role. So mm -hmm. it, it was it was difficult. Yes, I had a lot of support, but um, I, I think also it was, you know, something I had to do at that time and uh, to continue on and, and support my family. Yeah, well, it is completely it's so brave, but also uh, selfless. <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's something that I think is just really commendable. So I, I want to get into a little bit later, kind of where fast forward and, and the difference between the company back then and the one now and, and how, how your job has evolved. But uh, Alexa, Catherine's story has such a complex history as she just shared. And what was your approach to telling the story within a few minutes in rebuild, because you're trying to capture so much and, you do so beautifully, but it's it must have been a challenge. And could, tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, trans lives are often very complex. Um, they're not always linear, and they're not always, um, you know, easy to kind of package. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I knew that in three minutes that we couldn't tell the whole story. Um, so really, I think First and foremost, I wanted to make sure we hit the emotional impact that 
her story can have. Um, and really started out by listening to Maggie's song again and again and again, <laughs> um, just to kind of feel the emotions of the song. And, and there's, there's kind of a journey that the song takes us on. And I actually was kind of, you know, I had been introduced to Catherine's story um, before I really got to dig into the pictures. So I kind of had heard the story, listened to the song, thought about, you know, kind of had come up with the treatment for the video that way. And then, you know, when you act, when I actually got to the pictures, then you're also working with what was actually captured photographically. Yeah. And then there's some beautiful things with the photos, like there's some Polaroids, which have a really great look to them. There's those, the very old, the black and whites from when Catherine was a small child. And so just visually or aesthetically, those things had a certain charge and, and, and feeling you know, in the types of different photographs, the different periods of time. Um, and so you're working, you know, in some ways, the limitations are also something that come into the process because I really wanted to avoid using text as much as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're, you're, well, Catherine's story is fascinating. It's got so many amazing elements. Um, but also what, what do we have photographs of? And yeah. what can easily be seen quickly and, and create some kind of meaning for the viewer. So, so it was just kind of piecing that together. Um, and then I think the story of, you know, we got together, Catherine and Maggie and I, to look at the photographs. And, and you know, because Catherine and Maggie have this beautiful friendship, watching, you know, them share the photographs and, and the, the pleasure of it, that became part of the story I wanted to tell. Um, you know, also I thought that was so, so beautiful and really, you know, a lot of times when we talk about trans stories and complexity and trying to share these histories, we get rooted in kind of grief and pain and really to see the pleasure and joy in sharing, especially when you have someone who understands um, you know, kind of gets you and, and can understand, you know, the journey it took to get here as opposed to trying to define your life by these pictures of you, maybe when you weren't able to express yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a really important part of the story that, you know, um, is ultimately kind of the arrival point for the video. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, Maggie will love the song it like uh, Alexa just shared normally you're kind of feeling this kind of sorrow and grief and pain when you think and you you hear about trans stories because it's always rooted in um in in all of those challenges but I loved 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 the the part in the video where you kind of walk up and you smile and you see your friend and there's just this embrace and this 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 friendship and it kind of takes you out of that and it's just like no this is just about love and friendship and and the authenticity and so the, your friendship is very clear in the music video that it's not just acting and you're in a music video. So tell me a little about your relationship with Catherine and, and the work with the trans course of LA. Well, um, I appreciate that and thank you. And it's funny because um, the the phrase that Catherine and Abdullah from uh, trans course of LA always uses is from victim to victorious. And I think for me, I wanted to try and show that instead of, of course, there's a story here um, that is difficult and um, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, but I really also wanted to show the strength and the persever perseverance in it. And Catherine and I met a couple years ago, um, once I started uh, working with the Trans Course of LA, Catherine and I met and we instantly <laughs> became friends. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're both Canadian and it's, <laughs> it's always so funny because I mean, I've been in LA for like seven years and Catherine's been here longer than I've been here. Um, but there's something about like when you meet another Canadian here, you like instantly <laughs> become <laughs> friends. And with Catherine and I, like it was like, in a, in a minute, we're like, oh my gosh, and you know, talking like we've been friends forever. Mm -hmm. And every time I see Catherine, it's, you know, it's that thing and it's genuine. And um, there's something that I feel like 
uh, deep down, like when you grow up in a similar area, especially something, it's a different country and um, there's something that kind of bonds you. So I think that's a lot of the reason why we initially started becoming such great friends. And as time, of course, went on and I got to know Catherine more, I have always been inspired by her story and the fact that she comes out of it with such strength. And even the story that she was just telling like 10 minutes ago at the doctor's office, like she finds yes. the, the humor and the smiles and like everything. And with, with all parts of life, like I want, I want to live by that and like find the joy in everything. So um, really at the end of the day, I couldn't imagine a more inspiring story to tell for this. And Rebuild was written um, about a year and a half ago. And when it came time to really figuring out like, what should we be doing for this video? It was just kind of an, an obvious choice that, you know, Catherine's story is the best thing for this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really beautiful. And congrats, of course, on all of your success on Spotify and just that whole international market. I think it's amazing. You have a beautiful voice. And have you always wanted to be a singer or is this is this um just from yes, when you moved to LA? I always since I was like you know, three years old, I knew I wanted to do music and I knew singing and songwriting was kind of what I needed to do in order to to keep going on. So that's what brought me out to LA um, like seven years ago. I finally was able to move out here because as a Canadian, it can be a little bit tricky with like immigration. Right. And stuff. So it's, it's a process, but luckily I was able to come out here and, and it's, yeah, I've been here ever since. Love it. And I love Canadians. I have family in Toronto and I go there oh, all yeah. the time. So I'm all about it. All about, <laughs> all about Toronto. Everyone's so nice and pleasant. Uh, <laughs> so it's just, it's great. And also just the blend of cultures and the diversity. Yeah. And um, I, I love the city there and, and the country as a whole. So yes, love, 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 love the Canadians. <laughs> now, Catherine, what was it like for you when you first saw the full music video? Because it's one thing to be filming something and you're taking these shots and it's a long day. And we were talking off air. I think you were filming in April and it, I'm sure it was a really long shoot day. And it's it's hard if you're not a filmmaker to like, how is this going to piece together? You want me to stand where and you're next to your bed. OK, pick up your your dress, put your dress down. <laughs> it's like, what was it like when you finally saw the video? Oh, when I finally saw the video, I loved it. Um, well, uh, other than here's this beautiful young woman, Maggie, and this <laughs> older woman who has <laughs> been through a pandemic and put on a few pounds. And <laughs> Whoa, but no, it was beautiful. And, and um, Alexa did such a wonderful job in, in um, the directing the, you know, the, the scenes when we were out there, but also choosing the the pictures that she chose, it was fun to see some of my old pictures, me and my brother standing on the hood of an old Chevy car and, <laughs> and um, just all of those things, seeing my children as they grew up and, and sharing with them. I, I loved it. And then just that one that, the, you know, woke up that that was, yes, I did. I woke up finally. I am who I am. And, uh, you know, rebuilding your life is so important uh, to most trans people because we do have to do that. You know, it's you're you're leaving something behind and moving ahead. Um, I, I love the video. Uh, I love Maggie. She's <laughs> your friend, and um, you know, it's it's been such a joy to to work with her. Uh, the first video we did together as a whole chorus with with Maggie was um, you know, don't give up on love and and how we have to embrace that. So I, it's, it, it's a beautiful video. Um, technically I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not great at that stuff. And <laughs> I have an expression when I go on these sets of, well, let's hurry up and wait because that seems <laughs> to be what I do. When I go all, all actors, stars, and you, that yeah. is, that is what you do. You hurry up and wait. And so you are obviously professional and, and you have it down because that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> And you did a great job of it, but uh, I do it. Alexa meant, or Maggie mentioned earlier that everything you, even even challenging things, you you have a lightheartedness, and and even after you've been through so much, it's amazing that 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 is your disposition disposition. But you know, you said something just now, which was like, oh, I finally had to wake up. And to me, I feel like you've always been awake, and it's all of us around 
that are the ones that aren't awake. And so I, I feel like you're, you're um, very forgiving of, of the society that surrounds you because I feel like that's really where the, there's more of an issue. Cause of course, fast forward, you know, the company that, that you are doing all of your work with, you said they were so supportive compared to that first experience. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like, like the night and day experience? Yeah, um, well, you know, every, I, I just wanted to mention everyone's story is individual and unique and, and important. And um, I, I, I was, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased that my story came out, but there are lots of other stories, you know, one here as well, yeah. that has a story <laughs> that's quite unique and wonderful. But um, the, the difference was, you know, 20 years, things have changed, people have grown. And my, my understanding, I, I, I had a serious medical issue in 2011 and almost died. And when I came out of that, I had a very peaceful feeling knowing that I had to transition. My son, my youngest son, who I was living, who was living with me at the time, graduated from college the year after in 2012. I went to all my children and said, okay, you're all adults now. Here's me. This is what I'm going to do. Set out a plan, went to my company, and I essentially asked, I, I went to the head of our human resources department and said, this is what I'm going to do. How can you help me? I didn't go in with the sense of, oh, woe is me, you know, please, please be kind to me. No, that I, I couldn't do that. I wanted to go in with a strong attitude of, this is me. Um, I, I need some help, obviously. Here's my plan as to what to do. She was amazing. My, our human resources for, was absolutely amazing. Our company's been very embracing and wonderful. Um, I do consulting work. So there was an issue with clients and how they would react. And we formulated a letter, got that, sent that letter out to all clients. My best clients I went and met personally and told them about what was going to happen. Did I lose any clients? Absolutely. I lost a whole bunch of clients. But I also gained some, and I gained a lot of you know, respect from other clients um, knowing what I was going through, and they were willing to stand by me. So yeah. I was very proud of them and proud of the fact that my company was willing to stand by me. Right. And of course, professionally, that is something that you're rooted in and, and important. However, was it difficult for you to talk to your children and your, your close family? Like, was that a challenge or did you feel like they would already be okay or they already knew or? Um, you, we have a very loving relationship, our, our family. They're pretty close. Uh, you know, I have two families, really. I, I was married twice and have children from both, both marriages. Um, but they're all very tight and close. My daughter still has a lot of trouble. Um, she was very reluctant because she was losing her dad, she thought. Um, but I kept, you know, I've always told her, no, you haven't lost me. I'm still here. I just changed a little bit of what I look like. But she struggled with it. She still finds it difficult. I just mm -hmm. love her. I can't do anything else. And, yes, and support yes. Her, and that's all you can do. So, yes. Yeah, there, there's been, you know, I think some people look at my life and say, well, you've had it pretty easy. And get, no, I don't think any of us have it easy. <laughs> Certain, certainly not. Certainly not. And there's been trials and tribulations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. From people, support from people like Maggie and, you know, lots of others are very, it, it's wonderful. And our yes. community is blessed to have you know, um, allies that are strong and willing to help us. Absolutely. And now you, you did allude to, in which of course I'm getting to Alexa, which for you, I would, I would love to hear if you're, you're open to sharing a little bit about your story and how maybe your own experiences played into directing and how you do direct, you know, trans stories and even a, a music video like this, like does your personal experiences play into how you approach from an artistic standpoint, but also if you're, you're open to sharing, we, um, you know, of course I'd be honored to hear a little bit about your background as well. Sure. Um, I mean, I think the big difference between Catherine and my story is just, I, I transitioned two, almost two decades ago. Um, so it was a very different time. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think that, I think one of the, the big things about my story and my experience personally is that they're really, I, I was always 
so much more information has come out in in later years. Yeah. Um, I always and I didn't really transition in 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 within a, um, a trans or queer community. I was just immersed in my professional life and in um, the world at large. <laughs> So it's, I've, I've often been the first trans person in whatever environment I've been in and, and having to kind of, um, to navigate that, um, which, which I just think influences me, I think as a filmmaker, because I'm not afraid to go in directions that haven't previously been gone in. I'm kind of a, a kind of used, gone, grown used to that by now, even though information's coming out and I think it's, you know, it's also, there's a timeline where the progress to me feels ex extraordinarily slow. It's kind of amazing in some ways that as much has happened in my lifetime as has happened, but also 20 years is a really long time to still be coming, kind of running into the same types of misinformation and people not getting it and really not even having stories of people who've really gone that far beyond a lot of times when we're really focused on that moment of transition and the things people are going through because that tends to be the stories that get mm -hmm. the most coverage right and where people are interested and then they kind of drop off their interest with trans lives as we continue to have families and jobs and and want to branch out into other avenues of life and develop and you know and a lot of times you're running into those assumptions of what people no, um, and yeah, I think a lot of times it can feel like I'm, you know, it, it's you run into people and it's like, what are you projecting onto me? And then you're just kind of working from that, and and you're like, oh, okay, this is what you're coming in with. Um, as a filmmaker, I think you know, one of the, one of the shots that I feel most strongly about in the video is the one just of Catherine. It's, uh, all of her close-ups are great, but especially at the bridge of the song where we just kind of stay with her. And, you know, I think as um, simple as it sounds, you know, for, for, to create a space for her where I'm not projecting anything onto her, there's no, thing I'm trying to make her be and she can just exist and we can share that moment where we can kind of see her eyes and her face and, and in a very natural way um to me that's like almost a radical breakthrough in um in trans representation because so much of the time it's really there's there's so much weight on the messaging that you're trying to deliver using these human beings to deliver it. Mm -hmm. And so just, just to really, you know, to me, I'm, I'm really interested in humanity first and foremost as a filmmaker, not only trans people, of course. but, you know, to be able to involve trans people in this, in, in all of those aspects of humanity and really all the different facets of our lives um, rather than the most obvious or the most exotic or the, or whatever it is. Um, and, and really where we have common ground and, and have the same, you know, a lot of the same interests and needs as, as other people. Um, I think that's really part of what, what drives me as a filmmaker. Yeah, and clearly an amazing storyteller. I'm looking forward to seeing more of your work, but I, you know, I have very a very small taste and inkling. I mentioned off air to everybody, I used to live in LA and I came back home. <laughs> it just wasn't for me, but uh, with this, the small set of experiences I had as a filmmaker, as well as an actor in quote unquote Hollywood as a female and um, as an Asian female, right? We all like, like, Catherine had said, everybody's got challenges of different kinds and they're not all equal and they're, they're not all um, to be compared, but I totally um, know what that was like for me. And so I'm curious if you could share, cause I think people need to really understand what those roadblocks are like, like what, what additional challenges do you face specifically because you are a trans woman in, in, in this field, right? Because I think people just don't I don't want to say the word believe, but it's unfortunate. I think, I think they actually just don't believe that this discrimination exists or inequality, you know, that there's inequalities. And I'm sure that you could shed some light on that subject. 
Sure. Um, first of all, I just want to say like, I'm so happy to be here with all of these amazing women. Um, I also want to shout out um, my director of photography, Sarah Garth. Amazing. I mean, it, the video looks so good and she's a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And also Carolina Gutierrez, another trans woman who was our producer on the day and even helped with the choreography. It was just like yes, she did. <laughs> super, super multi-talented, amazing women. Um, so I just want to make sure we shout them out. But um, yeah, I think you really, you know, it's, it's exactly what you say, which is it's, it's like, you know, there's just being a woman in Hollywood and then all the additional things that our individual experiences bring to it. Um, I think one of the things that comes to mind is, you know, uh, Chloe Zhao just won the gold, you know, Golden Globes. And that was so it was second woman to do so, first Asian woman to do so. Um, and then you think about how many trans women directors that I know of that have had, and the answer is zero. So these are huge breakthroughs for women in general in the industry, but I, I look around and see a lot of the things I want to do. And I have literally zero, you know, examples of people who've been able to accomplish that. And zero is just a number that, you know, as much as when it's just one or two, we all know how overwhelming that can be. But when it's zero, it's really, it's just hasn't happened. Um, so that's, that's a huge challenge and that you're really trying to convince people that you have the ability to, to do those things and to get that recognition when they really have no precedent. And a lot of times people are just projecting onto you what they have seen or what they think that a trans person is or what they do or what their ability is. So I think underestimation is a huge part of what I'm up against. And I, I wanted to say that's one of the great things about working with Maggie. At no point in the whole process did Maggie ever, you know, underestimate. Like, I didn't feel like I was ever underestimated. I came with an idea. She loved it um, and believed I could do it. And, and that, was, that was great. And I hate to say it, but that's, unfortunately kind of a rare, rare thing yeah. um and and the other thing is is you know what they would call you know when there's such a history of discrimination in the industry I, I I've been an artist you know all of my adult life um and there were just years and years and years where we were completely shut out of the industry so cis, cis people were telling our stories shooting, you know, directing our, our, our movies and even playing our parts in roles. And really the, the, one of the landmarks for me is 2018, three years ago, which was when Charlotte Johansson was up for a, you know, a uh, trans male role. That was kind of like, to me, the pivot point in the industry where there was enough pushback where they were like, people were like, okay, we're not gonna do this anymore. There had already been some trans act actors doing work but but there were still a lot of movies being pushed forward with these you know a-list actors that um they were still kind of putting up them up for trans roles and at that point they're like yeah it's not worth the you know the the bad press or the blowback that yeah. they're getting but that's only three years ago <laughs> right right and 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 at this point it's still you know there's a lot of um, there's, there's still a lot of, um, of issues with trans representation. Patty Harrison, um, another, a trans actress just did an incredible interview. Um, I'd recommend everybody to go read it, um, because she was talking about, um, just the kind of roles that come her way, what you're up with against with all the gatekeepers, who, what people find, um, you know, they want, you know, people basically want to profit off our stories in some way. So it's like, what, how do they profit? She really hits a lot of the points that I feel are very close to my heart. I can't get into all of it today. Of so I just encourage everyone to go take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for explaining a lot of that. And it is, it's just frustrating that instead of looking at these roles and casting 
someone that would actually understand the role and just going into the, and then not casting it just because it's a PR thing is even more frustrating, right? And, and especially because there is so much talent in the community and it's like, how do you get that visibility? And, um, and, and you're going to be one of the pioneers to do it. So <laughs> the weight of it is all on you, unfortunately, yeah. Alexa, but uh, like you, you mentioned earlier, you're leading the way, you know, a lot of times you're, you look around and you're the first one that had to do and go through things. And so in terms of the film industry, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, the work that you're doing and, and how that's going to perpetuate through. And now Maggie, uh, of course, it, as, as Alexa mentioned, you're not only amazing to work with and you weren't here yet in the pre-room, but Catherine's like, the star is coming. <laughs> She'll be <laughs> logging on soon. <laughs> But clearly you have such um, just love in your heart in general, but can you tell me why you're passionate about working with the trans chorus of LA and, you know, your allyship and, and why this is such passion for you? Well, I mean, I've always loved music in general. And when I decided to pursue it as a career, one of my goals was to not just do it because I love music. Like I wanted to create awareness and and have a, a message that would hopefully inspire and, and change people. And you said earlier, like, you know, really the goal is to wake everybody else up. And that's always been, for me, the most important thing of, of why I do what I do. And um, when I moved to LA, I, I moved to West Hollywood and I immediately fell in love with this neighborhood. And I've lived here ever since because like, as soon as I got here and I got to LA and I, you know, I'm from a small town in Canada. I did live in Nashville for a little bit, but what I loved about this area and LA is like, I felt like I had never really experienced being in a place where people could just be who they are. And, and everyone was like open and, and, and loving. And I felt um, that here, it was much more of that compared to any other place that I've been in. And as I, became friends with people here, I started learning a lot more about the trans community and the LGBTQ community. And um, and when it came time to making the music video for Don't Give Up, I decided I wanted to make that story about someone who's struggling with their gender identity. And it was, um, it was a young person, someone in their youth. And I felt that like now with social media and with all of these things, like it's already difficult being a kid and growing up in these times. And then when you throw on top of that, like someone who is struggling with their gender identity, like the stories I was hearing from my friends and people that I knew, like that can be really difficult, especially when you're not in LA. And when you're in like, you know, a small, a small town or another country, it can be a really difficult thing. So that's really what inspired that video. And from there, um, that's how I met the trans course of LA. I thought, you know, how cool would it be? Like, what kind of message would it give if I was able to find a choir or a chorus to sing the song with? And if every member was trans, like I, I could just imagine like a kid in some small town, like seeing that and like, wow, like these people are people I can relate to. And they are up here singing and celebrating and there's a community of people. And then um, that's really how the live video for Don't Give Up came about. And um, ever since I've been close with, you know, so many people there and, and hearing their stories and um, becoming, you know, closer and closer with them and building these relationships, it's really inspiring and it motivates me and it inspires me to want to work even harder and to continue telling these stories and to create awareness and as you said wake everyone up and and at the end of the day that's really the the goal with my music is to just continue to tell these stories and create awareness and and be a voice for equality and humanity and not just because I love music which you know at the end of the day that's how we got here but I think it's I just think it's so important um, to cr use that platform to to spread a message and to yeah. create more awareness. Wonderful, that's amazing. I I'm I'm first of all, I was like, oh, I used to live in West Hollywood. <laughs> that's actually where I lived when I was, and I loved it. I like you said, it was just yeah. such an amazing place, and um, I loved West Hollywood. I just didn't love LA as a whole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's of course it's not perfect, and there's 
Yes. You know, but there's so many great parts about it and I totally get it. You know, LA is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you're a hundred percent and kudos to you for sticking it out and saying, no, like, here's what I really want to do. And here's where, unfortunately, you kind of need to be to create that art and to have that visibility. And what you mentioned earlier with representation, it's, it's so difficult and, and you're right for somebody watching that video and then seeing the, that there's representation and that there's there's people there singing on TV or in a, you know, it's just kind of like revelatory and it's really, really meaningful. It, and um, I think the work that you're doing is amazing. And so it must be really inspiring then to, I hear a lot of music and it makes me feel like, like aged when I'm like, Oh, you know, the music now doesn't have very much meaning <laughs> and like back in the day or, or whatever. Right. But uh, it, it must feel much more fulfilling as an artist to be able to have kind of that, motivation and inspiration behind the, the, the music itself. Cause I know as a, as I've spoken to other musicians, when you're starting out, you kind of don't get to choose, right? You get, you kind of like, well, my PR people, my team is saying that this is going to sell, or this is going to be popular. And there's that struggle between trying to be heard and get out there and then you can do your messaging or, or it's, it's almost like a choice. Do you feel like that there's that pull, like you have to do one or the other, or you're just kind of like, screw it. I'm just I doing mean, what I want definitely to Definitely <laughs> in pop music. There's always that thing of like, okay, what sells? And like, you want to cater to people and yeah, like there is at the end of the day, like a decision you have to make, but my stance was always like from the beginning, like this is authentic and it's true to me. And I, I, I be truly believe like when it comes to music, like you have to be your true and authentic self and that's, that's what's going to sell. So when I was making that decision, like it, it was, it was an easy thing. Like, this is what I believe in and this is who I am. And, and this is authentically me and, and whether or not people take that or not, you know, that's up to them, but, um, that that's where I've always stood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. And Catherine, uh, we you know we're talking about the film or the the music video and song rebuild and how inspiring it is. And of course, we're all on board here. We're all in a in a love fest with it because we love it. We know what it means to us and especially to to all of you. But do you feel it will inspire people to have more empathy and to maybe ask a question? Because one of the things I always tell people, they ask. We, uh, it's, it's no secret. There's been a lot of issues for the Asian American community and people are like, what should we do? I'm like, just talk to someone, ask a couple questions and don't be rude. And just, it's okay to make mistakes or think if you have a genuine heart and you're, you're truly asking questions, like, do you feel this will inspire people to maybe do the same, like ask questions and build empathy and, and, and maybe like get to know someone. <laughs> we can only hope, you know, that that would happen, whether it does or not, you know, it depends on a lot of things, but it's important to be visible. It's important to show uh, that, we're, well, you know, I'm just a, a regular person out there doing the same thing everybody else tries to do as, uh, you know, support their family, enjoy their work, contribute to society, be active in political issues and things to try and make this a better society. Will it create more empathy? I'm, I'm not sure whether, you know, that will happen. I, I would hope so. I would hope that people would gain a better understanding and support for our community. But again, I, it's the visibility that's really important. Um, we did a video a long time ago and it, one of the things that came from that was it was about advertising and seeing the LGBTQ community in advertising. And you know, one of the things came from that was if you can't see yourself, you can't be yourself. So if you don't see other trans people in the world, regardless of what they're doing, you can't really say, gee, I'm, you know, somebody, as you, as you mentioned before, you know, a young child in Nebraska, for instance, that doesn't have the visibility that we do in Los Angeles. And if they see these things, they might, it, it may give them more support and understanding. Um, hopefully it would give their parents some more empathy as well towards how their children are, what their children are going through. But um, yeah, certainly I hope that happens, that we have, we've touched people, not just within our community, but within the broader um, community of, of, you know, people who are allies, but are also learning about this. 
Um, a recent Pew poll showed that 63% of Americans, 63%, that's almost two thirds, support um, transgender rights. You know, the, the, that's, and regardless of party, whether they're a Republican or Democrat. So that there is great support for us and it's growing and, and changing. Um, you know, I, I remember back in the 50s and 60s, I didn't even know what transgender meant. It was, you know, the term was a transsexual at the time, if that was used at all. And uh, we've come a long way in my lifetime at any rate. And certainly um, as uh, Alexa has mentioned, even in the last three years or so, we've come a fair way. So I, yeah, yeah uh, the short answer is yes, I hope it does. Uh, and increase empathy. I just hope it increases visibility and lets people see if one person, one young person sees this and goes, wow, I can do that. I can be a songwriter or I can be whoever I want to be. That's, you know, that's been great for me that will have met. Yeah. My... And can you tell me a little bit about the trans chorus of LA? Oh, do you have an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Um, the Trans Chorus is a, a group of um, transgender non-conforming intersex people who got together about five years ago. Um, we were formed by the Gay Men's Chorus in Los Angeles and uh, a trans woman from Cincinnati uh, named Lindsay Deaton, who had the vision to create this chorus and pull people and, and use their voices to you know, just show uh, what being trans is in, uh, in, in the artistic sense. Um, we've evolved since then. We have now have a new um, artistic director, Abdullah Hall, who is, uh, um, they are a, a gender nonconforming, amazing person, just, I, I'm, I'm, I love them to pieces. And we've evolved into doing music and, and interacting with other people to do music. Um, certainly Maggie has been wonderful in that. And her manager, Scott McCracken, has just been amazing to support us. Um, but we are we are doing now, this last year has been very challenging. Uh, as with anybody, we've done a lot of videos and uh, put them together for Pride. This month is crazy with <laughs> all of the events that are going on. It's, it's wonderful, but it's been hectic. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we, we want to, as was mentioned before, we want people to go from being victims to victorious. We want people to understand that they don't have to be victims. You know, that that's a choice you can make you and you can be victorious. You can be successful. You can make an impact in this world. And that's what we're trying to do. So, yeah, uh, we're evolving still. We've got a long way to go. We have our ups and our downs. And uh, as I said, this year has been particularly challenging as it has for everybody, um, no matter what area you work in. So, um, yeah. yeah, we're very happy that we're doing some, some really cool things right now. Excellent. Well, last couple of questions for everybody. I know we're, our time goes by so quickly here and I feel like I need to have a one hour with each of you separately so we can really delve into uh, the conversation and your lives. Everybody um, is so wonderful, but Alexa, perhaps you can kind of share, I know we touched on it a little bit in the filmmakers, um, you know, from filmmaking standpoint, but you know, we're talking about Pride Month, we're talking about, you know, what ways we celebrate and honoring. And of course, it's like, as soon as June is over, then everyone moves on to the next thing. And, and we all like are in our wrapped up in our own worlds. But I think one of the biggest things that I've come into whenever I have a conversation is there's so many stereotypes that people have about the community as a whole. And there's just this a little bit of that fear of maybe because they don't know enough. And of course, Catherine, you can weigh in as well, but like, what are some of the stereotypes that you feel that people really need to hear as, as crazy as it is, but like, they need to hear like, no, this is, you know, we're not, um, X, Y, Z, right. What are some of the things that you really feel that have been the most hurtful to the community? I don't, I don't know if it's hurtful, but it's, um, kind of a predominant, I, I, I'm going to, you know, focus to start just on, on trans women representation, because I think there's kind of a um, little bit of a conflation with drag culture <laughs> right. um, when it comes to trans women. Um, and it's, it's, it's easy to kind of show like being out and being very expressive, but there's a lot of trans women, a lot of my closest friends and circle there's a great community of trans women here in LA and 
um, you know, it's just not necessarily how we all come across. And, you know, you kind of run into people and they're like, yes, queen. And you're like, that's not really my vibe. So it's, it's just not really, you know, interacting always with what you think and you're projecting again, as I've mentioned earlier, just people kind of projecting their idea of what that is rather than reading you, understanding your energy, understanding your look. Um, so, you know, not all of us have, are glitter, heavy makeup, you know, that kind of just, it's not always, you know, that. Um, and I think that's one of the things I see in trans representation, even though it's improving. Mm -hmm. um, Pose, for example, great show, huge breakthroughs, but it still kind of treats the trans community as though we exist over here. Mm -hmm. And it's all this very fabulous thing and it can be, <laughs> but it can also be very mundane and very much like other people's lives. And so I, I think, you know, I'd like people to feel out a little bit more like which is which. The other thing I'll mention is just bodies. Um, you know, really it's difficult. I would say bodies and identity. Because um, as Catherine mentioned, the, cho the chorus is made up of, of gender non-conforming people um, and intersex people and trans people. And it's great, we have to unify because we are a relatively small part of the population. But you know, any effort to reduce us to one thing is, is gonna be always re result in a stereotype um, because you know, some of us are not gender non-conforming. I mean, we are all in the sense that we're trans and we've experienced some dissonance with like our birth, assigned birth genders and our, you know, innate sense of who we are. We all share that. But in terms of how we identify, I mean, um, for me, I've always innately felt I was a woman. That hasn't changed. It doesn't change now that, you know, um, non-binary is becoming more culturally accepted. It's just an innate sense of who I am. So, you know, I think just understanding the, the community is really a spectrum, a very, with a lot of variation um, and trans masculine people are gonna have very different experiences and issues than, than, than trans women um, and, and, gen and people who identify as non-binary is another thing. And then with our bodies, it's like, you know, you can't just assume, you know, to this day, it's kind of people assume um, that being trans means a specific thing. And it really does not. Um, people uh, go through medical transition, opt for different surgeries, sometimes they do not. Um, and yet there's kind of a predominant, you know, if you, if you come out as trans, it's instantly people are going to start to project what that means to them about your body and what's going on. Um, it can be delicate to inquire about those things. I would just say, don't make really basic assumptions about that. Um, I've been experiencing that, as I said, I transitioned 20 years ago, but to this day, people, you know, being out as trans, it's like, then people will just start to project things onto your body or what's going on. So yeah, those are the stereotypes I think are the biggest ones I would personally <laughs> would like to, to see changed. Mm -hmm. and Catherine, did you want to weigh in on that as well? Uh, well, I think that um, Alexa was, you know, eloquently <laughs> talked about what, what the issues are. We, we you know, uh, I, we're all unique. We all have these things. Um, it used to be you know, I remember the Rocky Horror Picture Show as a, a, an illustration of, you know, that the community that we were supposed to be and, and the, 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 um, the ballroom scenes and all of that kind of thing is, is changed. And we're just, we're just trying to be regular people and, and do our jobs and live and, and get out of life what we can get out of life. I, you know, unfortunately, and, and I, I agree with Alexa, it's quite different for a trans man than it is for a trans woman. And now we're finding um, non-binary, gender non-conforming people. It's a whole new layer that's been brought in to, to, to work with. Um, trans men seem to, you know, they're, they're 
have their issues. Um, certainly testosterone has a much more profound effect on the body and it's the changes than, than does estrogen, but estrogen is, does have some effects. And, um, I, you know, everyone's different. We don't have to all look up to the idea, oh, now you're a woman, you've got to be exact, you know, beautiful in the eyes of what Hollywood says is beautiful. And if you're not, then you're really not a, a woman. And I mean, these are things that we struggle with defining what is a woman you know what what does that mean to everybody in 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 the world as i i don't like the term transgender i i don't think i ever changed my gender it's always been the same i've changed my body and, and that we're always everyone's transitioning their whole life i i don't mind the term transition but um i you know, I've always felt that I was who I am, um, and that's a trans woman. And I'm proud to say I'm a trans woman. I, I don't need to say I'm, I'm a woman, which I am, but I, I like to use that. And again, it comes to my personal bias of being visible and, and wanting to let people know mm -hmm. it's okay to be who you are. Um, I have a dear friend in, in Toronto who is an author and a um, uh, she does a lot of uh, consulting with businesses about authenticity and letting people be authentic. And um, she wrote a wonderful book called The Authenticity Principle. And it's about her as an Indian woman a, coming from a Sikh background and changing to become this emancipated woman in the Canadian culture and how difficult that was. But it, it, it shows, it has so many parallels to us transitioning from you know, where, where we were before to where we are now. Mm -hmm. anyway, I, I, it's the kind of thing I think we can all talk about forever. <laughs> I, it's really, again, comes down to being visible, being accepting who you are, being authentic and having the opportunity to live that the same as anyone else, mm -hmm. just have those rights. Absolutely. And Maggie, I, you know, as an ally, and I think people are, would look up to you to the fact that you are doing the work you're doing and everything, but maybe you can share how people can get more educated or knowledgeable since it seems intimidating sometimes for people to get to know anybody, let alone a community. They're just there. They're, there's so many questions about like, how was that like for you or what advice would you give to people? I think the advice I would give is just to listen and to be open. Um, the internet is a, of course, a great resource now that people didn't have access to like 30 years ago. And, and we're lucky in that sense where you could read about people's stories, but I think just to be open and to, and to listen, I think is the most important thing. Um, and I do wanna just give a shout out to Alexa because Scott and I, like Scott is my manager as Catherine mentioned. And when we were getting ready to figure out this video, like it's always stressful. like you know, is it going to go okay? And like, do we all share the same vision? And, and how's it going to end up? Like, it's, you know, it's a gamble, um, always. Um, so I just remember like the day of the shoot. Um, well, Alexa did so much prep work ahead of time. And like, everything was just perfectly organized. And I felt like, oh my God, like, I don't have to stress at all. Like I called Scott and I was like, this is like a breeze. Like this was the most organized shoot I had ever you know I, I do a lot of music videos and this was by far the best experience for me and Alexa you were so great at staying on top of everything and organizing this great group of people that you brought in like Alexa brought in this squad of people and they were all so professional and it really goes to show obviously like the fact that you can pull in these amazing people as well it goes to show who you are and these people want to work with you as well and I think the thing I learned too, like even the prep work before, um, asking everyone's pronouns. Like I, there was never a director that had asked that before. And for me, it was nice knowing that going into it. Um, and I had never, you know, no one's really ever asked that ahead of time before going into a shoot. So I think even that alone just created an environment where I felt people could just be themselves and people were more open and, and I really enjoyed that part of it and it you know I learned a lot that day too so I think I, I feel lucky that this all happened the way that it did for mm -hmm. sure 
Yeah. And I know you've all been posting on the social media, like, because the, the, the music video just launched uh, like a week ago and yeah. there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Is there anything Maggie that sticks out in the behind the scenes stories or anything fun that you want to share or anything that <laughs> kind of sticks out in your mind? That APB, Alex, who was driving around <laughs> like a boss. And we had, it was like, basically the property, we fell in love with this location, which is why it was such a tight deadline because as Alexa mentioned before, we started this call, um, we knew what we wanted to shoot. We knew we wanted to tell this story and we were trying to figure out this, like, where were we going to shoot this? And there's this place in Malibu that Alexa found um, and they were like only available this one day. And it was only like, I think like a few days in advance we had and we're like, shit, I'm sorry. I <laughs> no, know. it's fine. We Open. only have like a few days to actually pull this together. Can we do it? And I remember Alexa, there was like, a moment on the phone we're like is this possible like is this actually possible for us to do it and you were like let's just do it and we're like okay so <laughs> it ended up being like this amazing spot in Malibu and it's like in the mountains and like there's nobody around um and so with basically to get around to the different locations you had to drive like this cool little ATV <laughs> I was, you know at first it's like scary because like there's like ledges and stuff but that was, you know, a high <laughs> <for me. laughs> yeah, you got like kind of the amusement park yeah. feel as well as like, a, sure. like, and <laughs> like, you know, being in LA, like, it's just nice to get out mm -hmm. um, and be somewhere new in a new environment. That was really fun. And just the crew of people were, were so great. Carolina ended up, um, she was one of the, the girls on set with us that I had known before ironically I didn't even put two and two together until that day and we're like oh my gosh good to see you <laughs> um but she ended up you know stepping up the game she's a really great dancer and she was like helping me with the movements and stuff so it was just really great everyone kind of um pulled it together and really gave everything and and that was really enjoyable yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. And Catherine, do you have any fond memories of the shoot itself? I know we're coming on time, but I want to- I, I want to say one thing yes. just just real quick, um, because there is a one shot of Maggie, because there's a, there's, a, there's a big drop off ledge and you go up and something smelled so good. <laughs> it was some plant or something. And there's just uh, a really wonderful shot of Maggie with like the wind blowing through her hair. And mm -hmm. I know she was like, that, that, that plant uh, and she's just like enjoying life and just taking it in. And fortunately you're able to like capture that, that feeling. But I really remember that moment as like one of the, one of the highlights. Sorry, I just had to. No, no, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you as well, like some of those things, because I, I think we all see the finished product, but I know there's so much that goes in between the pages, right? It's so much in between the shots and, and, and there's always a lot of fun in, in hearing that unfold. And it did, it looked like, you were in another completely didn't, I didn't realize it was in LA. Cause I was like, where did you, I was going to ask where you shot that. So it, it, it really was, it was captured where you, we couldn't really tell where you were at, but yeah, either, um, uh, Catherine, do you also have a, a behind the scenes story to share? Oh, just the professionalism of the whole crew and, and the way they worked. It was, you know, it was so wonderful and made me feel so at home as somebody who's not, you know, normally in that kind of an environment from the, you know, when I arrived and immediately the makeup and hairstylist took over and got me ready. And I, you know, just, just watching Alexa work and, and seeing how she managed everything was quite amazing. And seeing the film crew, these, these young women who were lifting these immensely heavy, huge <laughs> things, and they're pushing them around and moving. It was, it was an education for me. And it was a joy to be there. Uh, everything was, it, it was seamless. You know, from the moment I arrived to the moment I left, um, I, I just felt, oh, I'm in great hands here. They're just <laughs> after me all day. And they did. And, and, and it was wonderful. And I can't, I can't thank you all enough for, for what you did. And it was so wonderful to work with Lexa as another trans woman and, and Catalina. And then the whole film crew being women. It, it was amazing. And, you know, there were a few token men in there that <laughs> <laughs> we left, you left them on set. You're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, the crew is amazing. I, I was just blown away by their professionalism and yeah. how accommodating they were to help 
you know, somebody who's not in this industry to, to, to do what we did. Yeah, so we've, we've heard from the talent and from the director's standpoint, was everything as smooth as, as, as they're <laughs> describing? <laughs> it, it kind of was, um, right. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, you know, I've had my, my growing pains with some, you know, just experience, like fortunately I've been able to shoot enough now to kind of anticipate what could happen. And this was like doing everything on fast forward because it was such a tight t timeline. Mm -hmm. And we were dealing with a location, which as Maggie said, was an adventure, you know, just to kind of <laughs> do it and even scouting it, you know. Um, and it was outdoors. That's always a risk. Yeah, it was indoor yeah. and outdoors. Oh, indoor, and yeah. so, you know, we did, you know, we had all the interiors and we had a very mm -hmm. tight amount of time in, in the interiors because that was kind of a separate deal. And then, you know, um, working with the sunlight and I mean, there were a lot of things and it was extremely fast schedules. So, you know, the thing is, and I mentioned before, you know, the great thing is to get an opportunity like that and just to be prepared because for so long we haven't had these opportunities. And so like, I always feel like I'm going to nail this thing, you know, as best, <laughs> like I have to do it better because that's what often we're up against. But, you know, I, I will be honest, you know, in, in getting to this point, and I'm sure it can happen again, because films are always uh, unpredictable, um, <laughs> that, you know, just there's, you know, the bumps in the road do help you, you know, experience, there's, there's no real replacement for experience, in other mm -hmm. words, like, you know, I would say all that made today go well were experiences I've had in the, in, or not, you know, that day go well was the experiences I've had in the past. And, you know, I take anything that doesn't go well, I take, you know, really deeply to heart and I want everything to go smoothly. I want everyone to have a great time and feel like it's a, it's a creative, joyful experience. And we all know sets cannot function like that. Correct. <laughs> We've all seen the other side of it. So trying to, I mean, that's, that's something, you know, it's kind of like Maggie was talking about with, with her music, you know, that's something I really want to bring to production and to the whole process is that sense of, of everyone feeling comfortable and empowered and, you know, and really, you know, work with people who have that that passion to really to shine like and and the crew was was fantastic it, they were, i mean incredible and fortunately i've worked with with sarah the dp before so we we now have kind of we have a great um that that's so key the rapport and being able to work together yeah the yeah, rapport it's we just super important your dp we yeah. understand each other and that that was really i mean when i asked sarah actually i was like can we do this by tuesday and she's like okay because she also puts she pulls together you know her her team her camp mm -hmm, the camera team mm -hmm. so she had to to do some crewing as well and so i was like if she says you can do it and maggie can do it <laughs> Catherine could like those were like the key pieces and they were like, okay, we're going for it. And then everything just came together, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's great. There's nothing like experience and there's nothing like having team, like a team that you Yeah. Have. Well, it actually sounded Build pretty seamless. Yeah. Sounded pretty seamless. That's amazing. So final, final round is just, to, you know, how do you celebrate pride month and you know, what does it mean to you? Of course we are uh, live here and this is June. So we're right in the middle of it and we'll, we'll start with Maggie and then just kind of go back around. Um, celebrating Pride Month. I'm going next weekend to some events with some friends. And really, for me, this is the biggest celebration is this video and releasing mm -hmm. the video. And that's, yeah, for me, the biggest celebration. Excellent. Excellent. And Alexa? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I mean, uh, this video, like for me, <laughs> the project, I'm, 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 you know, as an artist, like releasing a project, getting to talk, have these, this conversation. Um, that and you know helping Catherine tell her story that is pride month like yeah. for me like the biggest way to celebrate um I don't really I'm not really a big parade person <laughs> I just wanted to say too though like the thing about pride is that it really does come from a time where people really weren't at all free to be out in public and and to kind of do this almost like a demonstration and, and we're here and let people know and I don't think it's as necessary, but it's important to remember why it exists and, and what it's for. And so I just want to send like love out to everybody who will be out and celebrate and just tell them 
try not to have too many bad drinks and avoid as much drama as possible. <laughs> Great advice. Great advice. <laughs> Catherine. Oh, it's, it's a very hectic, busy time for the chorus. We we've produced a few videos that are being shown, you know, because every, a lot of the prides are virtual this year, we had to do um, recordings and send them off to the prides. And so this weekend is really big at the LGBT center in LA and uh, we're involved in that and um our artistic director um, abdul hall is emceeing that whole thing and and uh, they're they're pretty amazing what they do um and pride goes on in fact palm springs pride is not till november because it's too hot right now <laughs> <laughs> so they hold it in november there's um san diego's in july so we're doing a lot of things, but it's a very busy time, celebratory time, and a, and a wonderful time for the community. It was amazing. I just one last thing. Last on um, the fifteenth, um, uh, which was what month? Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The 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 Abbey in um, WeHo opened up at midnight because the governor had said starting on the 15th there was a lineup starting at nine o'clock to get in it was packed at midnight with people just celebrating pride and nice. being there it was uh quite amazing to see on, on tv to see all these people so pride is about you know just about being proud and, and celebrating the, the fact that we are becoming more visible and that that's important and um we've rebuilt we are rebuilding our lives to be that visibility so i i can't thank alexa and maggie enough for for allowing me to be a a small part of what they are doing and to show our story to the world it's wonderful and thank you mimi for having us here and um sharing our views <laughs> you're so welcome and i'm the one that's honored thank you so much catherine alexa and maggie this was it's such a wonderful conversation i learned so much but i also uh this is how i'm celebrating pride so <laughs> thank you for being a part of that so that i can help share the story help with the visibility and i will link all of the stuff here everyone's instagrams and facebook's and all the social media but also the music videos so we can all get inspired and uh we can all rebuild because i think it it reaches all of us and it's all important for all of us to, um, you know, kind of find that connectivity. So thank you ladies so much for sharing. And I will say goodbye to all the Facebook people out there, but bye Facebook people. <laughs> That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook.